Hello everyone. As promised on Discord, in this video I'll show you how to create new behaviors for the mobile pedestrian system. I'll start by creating a new mono behavior script to control the behaviors. I'll call it running test since our behaviors will involve running towards and away from a point. Next, I'll attach the script to a game object and open it. The first thing I want to do is instantiate a pedestrian at a specific point to make testing easier. For that, I'll create a public transform field and then drag the start position into it from the editor. When I press the one key on my keyboard, I want a new pedestrian to be instantiated at that position. To do this, I'll first remove the pedestrian with index 0 and then instantiate it again. I remove it first so that the pedestrian becomes available to be respawned. The first parameter will be the position, in this case, the position of our start transform. The second parameter is the pedestrian type. Since we don't need a callback here, I'll just pass null. Now, let's create that start game object in the scene, place it where we want, and drag it into our script field. We're ready to test. When I press 1 on the keyboard, the pedestrian spawns near the start game object exactly as expected. Now it's time to create our first behavior. I'll create a new script and call it run towards point. When creating a new behavior, it's mandatory to extend the pedestrian behavior class. At first, you'll see an error. To fix this, simply right click on the class name and choose implement abstract class. For more details about what the execute and onDestroy methods do, please check the documentation. Next, I'll make a simple run behavior. For this, I'll set up a float variable to define the running speed. For now, I'll initialize it with a value of 1. A speed of 1 means running, while a speed of 0.5 means walking. To actually make the pedestrian walk or run, just call the free walk method with the speed variable as a parameter. Let's test this and see if it works. I'll start the newly created behavior by pressing the 2 key on the keyboard. To start a behavior, simply call the start behavior API method. Between the brackets, specify the behavior you want to start. In this case, run towards point. The parameter is the index of the pedestrian you want this behavior to run on, in this case 0. If we test this right now, You'll notice a warning saying that the behavior is not available for our pedestrian. That's because it hasn't been added to the default behavior list yet. We can fix this by adding it to the list, simply by calling the constructor of our newly created behavior. The position in the list represents its priority. Please refer to the documentation for more details. Now, our behavior should execute properly. And when I press 2 on the keyboard, the pedestrian starts running, just like we want it. Now let's define a destination for our pedestrian. For that, I'll create an empty game object and place it somewhere in the scene. In the run towards point script, I'll add a method called setPerms so we can pass the destination and running speed as parameters instead of hard coding them. The first parameter will be the running speed and the second will be a vector 3 representing the destination position. Inside the method, I'll set the global running speed from the parameter, and for the destination, I'll use the API method that sets the pedestrian's destination to the closest waypoint near that vector 3 position. This automatically uses pathfinding and generates the full path for the pedestrian towards the destination. Now, in most cases, when a pedestrian reaches a destination, you'll want to trigger some kind of action. To check when the destination is reached, we can use the on destination reached event. Right click to create the event handler. For now, I'll just add a simple debug message. When working with events, always remember to unsubscribe from them inside the onDestroy method. Next, let's call our setPerms method and pass in custom parameters for speed and destination. To do that, we'll use the getPedestrianBehaviorOfType API method. Inside the brackets, specify the behavior you want. In our case, run towards point. Also provide the pedestrian index as the method parameter. Since this method returns an object of the base type pedestrian behavior, we'll need to cast it to our run towards point type to be able to access the set perms method we just created. Now we can pass in the speed and destination. Let's run it. 
Oh, looks like I forgot to assign the destination game object in the script. And now, another issue. It says pathfinding is not enabled. To enable it, just open the settings window, tick the checkbox for enable pathfinding, and press apply settings. All right, third time's the charm, and indeed, it works. The pedestrian starts running, following the newly generated path towards the destination. And once it reaches it, the destination reached debug message shows up in the console. Now it's time to create the other behavior for this video run away from point. For that, I'll create a new script called run away from point and open it. Just like before, we need to extend the pedestrian behavior abstract class and implement its abstract methods. Since the pedestrian still needs to run, the initial setup will look almost identical to the previous behavior. We'll create a float variable for the run speed and a vector three variable for the point to run away from. Next, I'll add a separams method to initialize these variables. Inside the execute method, let's make the pedestrian move using the running speed. I want this new behavior to start when I press the three key on my keyboard. When that happens, we'll start the run away from point behavior using the start behavior API method. The last step is to add this new behavior to the default behavior list. Now we're ready to test. To confirm that the behavior is active, I'll enable debug pedestrian AI from the settings window. When I press three, the behavior does change, but the pedestrian stops moving. That's because the run speed is still set to zero. I forgot to call the setperms method to initialize the run speed value. Let's fix that now. As in the previous example, We'll use the get pedestrian behavior of type API method, cast it to our current behavior, then call separums. For testing, I'll set the run speed to one, and as the run from point, I'll use the same destination object we created earlier. If we run it now, the pedestrian starts moving as expected. Next, let's make sure they actually run away from that destination object. The first thing we need to do is make the pedestrian ignore the waypoints that come from the system and instead use the waypoints provided by this behavior inside the onBecomeActive method. For that, I'll create a reference to the pedestrian class and initialize it inside onBecomeActive. Then, I'll set the has external waypoint selection method property to true. This tells the pedestrian to stop navigating with the system generated waypoints. When the behavior stops, inside onBecomeActive, we need to give control back to the system. So, we'll set the has external waypoint selection method property back to false. I'll also add a safety check to make sure the pedestrian script is not null, since behaviors always start as inactive. To better understand what this property does, let's test it now. As you can see, when the property is set to true, the pedestrian no longer moves to the next waypoint and will just keep circling around the same one. To know when a new waypoint needs to be assigned, we need to subscribe to the on custom waypoint requested event. I'll create a method called request waypoint as the event handler. Just right click and let the IDE generate the method definition. In order to work with waypoints, we also need references to the pedestrian waypoint manager and the pedestrian waypoints data handler. Now, let's create a new method that will return the index of the next waypoint for our pedestrian. I'll call it get new waypoint index. This method will require three parameters. The current waypoint index, the pedestrian index that made the request, and the pedestrian type, so that the proposed waypoints allow passing for that specific type. Let's pass those parameters. The current waypoint can be retrieved using the get current waypoint index from path method from the waypoint manager, passing in the pedestrian index. The second parameter is simply the pedestrian index. And the third parameter is the pedestrian type, which we can access from the type property. For now, let's assume that get new waypoint index returns a waypoint. 
the first thing we need to do is verify that the return waypoint is valid. We can do this by comparing the index with the invalid waypoint index. If the waypoint is valid, we add it to the path by calling add waypoint to path, passing in the pedestrian index and the waypoint index as parameters. After that, we call change waypoint for the pedestrian index to notify the pedestrian that its path has been updated. That's all we need for adding custom waypoints to the pedestrian. Now, let's focus on how to select waypoints that are far away from a specified destination. First, we create an integer list with all the possible waypoints that can be reached from the current one. If there are no possible waypoints, we simply return the invalid waypoint index. If waypoints are available, we need to select the one that is the furthest away from our stored point. For example, in this case, the pedestrian can move in three directions. We need to choose the waypoint that is farthest from our target object. Here, that would be the yellow one. In the code, we start by initializing the maximum distance with zero. We also create a variable to store the selected waypoint index. Next, we loop through all possible waypoint indexes. For each one, we get the position by calling the get waypoint from index API method. We then compute the squared magnitude between the waypoint position and the point we want to run away from. If the distance is greater than the current maximum, we update both the maximum distance and the selected waypoint index. At the end of the loop, we return the waypoint index that is furthest away. Now let's test this. Our destination game object is at the top, so the pedestrian should always run away from it when I press the 3 key. Hmm, this looks strange. It seems I forgot to initialize the waypoint manager and the pedestrian waypoints data handler. Okay, now it should work. After pressing 3, the waypoints are correctly generated downward. However, the pedestrian already has a path, so we need to clear that first. To fix this, we simply call remove path from the waypoint manager every time this behavior becomes active. Now, when I press 3, the pedestrian starts running downwards. If I move the destination around, the pedestrian will always run in the opposite direction. For example, here it moves toward the top left of the screen. And that's it. After watching this, I hope you now have a better understanding of pedestrian behaviors and how to create new ones. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to join our Discord community for more information and to vote on what features will be developed next for the mobile pedestrian system.